to add diversity and interest you bowls. One good way to do that is with the use of swags. I started experimenting with swags very early in my bowl making career and I'm showing you for the first time the ones that did not make the cut for the book so you can see my progression. All right, there are basically two kinds of swags. There are ones that go across several rings. Mm -hmm. In this case there's a big purple heart ring and a shallower ring that I think was probably made out of cherry. Mm -hmm. Right? And this was the very first time I actually created a swag bowl, and I said, this is really nice, and I worked with it. But I also found there was another kind of swag, which is reflected in my book with the footed candy dish in, one of the, in the last chapter that uses shallow scallops that are like swags, but they only span one ring, which means there's no problem aligning them on adjacent rings. Although, as I found, if you sand them too vigorously, you run the risk of sanding them away, which is why this one didn't make the cut. But it started teaching me about how to work with them. All right, some of the earlier bowls that you see over here are certainly interesting, but they're a little bit on the plain and simple side. But they were the prototypes of some of my later bowls that I've displayed on a Scrosso Woodworking and Crafts forum. But it's the same principle. This one has the shallow swags, two sets of them though, around a center ring. And this one actually uses a glue-up that's similar to ones that I use for the shallower swags, but only on a single ring. All right, now I'll make this a little bit more explicit by showing you examples of what the blanks look like. And what I will do after this introduction is to go down to the shop and cut them so you can see the progress. You may be wondering why I'm shooting a woodworking video in my kitchen, and the real answer is that just as we were getting set up to shoot it down in the shop, some people came in, and for practical and political reasons, it was not wise to continue or to start filming the video at that point. So I brought my blanks home and I said, okay, we will shoot these in the kitchen. All right, now, to do the kinds of swags that are actually scallopy, use the glue up that you'll find in my book for the footed candy dish. It's based on an octagon. And here, instead of using straight pieces of wood, plain pieces that give you a plain scallop, I kind of made my own plywood. I've been experimenting with plywood with interesting effects. But since you never quite know what you get when you cut into a piece of plywood after you've committed to the blank, it's more controlled to make your own. So I made these out of strips of approximately quarter inch thick yellow heart and bloodwood, glued up exactly the same way as they are in the front of candy dish. Two sides opposite glued up first, trimmed, and then the other two facing sides glued up. What I'm going to do with this is to use this as part of a more elaborate project with two sets of swags and I have a, a different kind of center ring glued up and I will show you that when it moves further along. Now these two blanks represent typical swags, the kind that span several rings and the kind that people have had a lot of trouble gluing up and getting aligned. And one of the things I will show you after the rings are cut are secrets that I found to help ensure that your alignment is as close to perfect as it can be. All right, now the basis of making the swags is laminating in strips of wood that run tangential to the rings. What that means for those of you who have long forgotten your high school geometry is that instead of running across with or directly across the grain, they run diagonally, so they touch on the rings. And when these are cut at an angle and glued up, this is what forms your swags. The depth of the swag depends on where the line is in relation to your blank, and also how thick it is. Now I did one very conventional glue up, and I did another one that I've been waiting to do for several months, but our drum sander in the shop was down for the last three months. It finally came back. So I could sand this, I used strips of plywood that you can see the 
end grain here that these are strips of plywood that look like regular wood on the face of it. And I'm very curious to see what happens with the stripes facing out as I cut the swags. This is the way I've done the glue ups for projects like this, where as you sand, you go through the strips here, the stripes are facing up. So this will be an interesting experiment. I don't know how this will come out, but I will post, certainly post the results. Now, one other thing that you need to take into account is how many rings your swags are going to span. The more rings they span, the trickier the glue up. A two ring swag just gives you two rings that you have to worry about, a three gives you three, and so forth. I've not yet tried a four, but I've gotten pretty good at a three. And you can predict what's going to happen by looking at where your rings are in relation to your swags. The ring that just touches the swag is going to be the first ring that has no swag on it. If I made thinner rings, I probably would have four rings with swags. I did not want that. This, after sanding, reduced to 11 16th thickness. And since I decided I would go with the 3 8 inch ring, which would get me past the swag and three rings, my cutting angle is going to be about 30 degrees. To compute the cutting angle for this blank, which uses a 3 8 inch ring and an 11 16th thick board, which is what was left after I sanded it smooth, I came up with a 30 degree angle, which I computed using the guide and formula that's provided in the appendix of my book, All right, which is based on the tangent function for those of you who remember your high school trigonometry. The other blank worked out to the same thickness that was purely by accident, but I needed to sand it until it was smooth. And there I'm going to do the same thing. The 3 8 inch wide ring with the 30 degree cutting angle. For this blank, however, since I want the swag to last as long as possible, I'm going to cut it at a smaller angle and use a quarter inch ring. So for 11 16ths, again the same thickness, I'm going to use a 22 degree angle and a quarter of an inch ring. Now the reason that I drew things directly on the blank my rings are drawn here on the blank rather than using a paper pattern, is that I want to see exactly where things are going to fall. And if my glue up was not precise, I will tweak it a little bit to make sure that things will look regular and I'll do whatever corrections I have to do with the sanding. So the next step is to go down to the shop to cut these rings, and then as they stack up, you'll see what they look like. So tomorrow when I go down to the shop, I will do the cutting and then I will come back either here to my kitchen or if I'm lucky, we'll do it in the shop and I'll show you what the next step looks like and how to maximize your chances for success with alignment. So tune in for the next installment.